our course, Linear Algebra, is about trying to find solutions to a particular set of problems, that is, systems of linear equations. So our first task is to try to figure out what are systems of linear equations and what does it mean to be a solution of a system of linear equations. But what is kind of exciting about linear algebra is that we are going to be able to pose in our first video here precisely what the major problem that we're going to try to solve over the entirety of this course is going to be. And in fact, the problem is going to appear simple and, and modest and, and perhaps not even very exciting. But we can state it now and we're going to see over the course of the next few months that this question that we're going to be asking, how to find solutions to systems of linear equations, provides in fact a very rich and deep and well understood and intuitive and geometric picture that is one of the nicest stories in all of mathematics. All right, so a linear equation is an equation that has a whole bunch of different variables. In this case, I have n of them, an x1, an x2, all the way down to an xn. But that the equation doesn't have cosine of a variable, it doesn't have a variable squared, it doesn't have e to the power of a variable. It's every variable that appears here is all raised, if you will, to the power of 1. The first variable is only occurring to the power of 1, the second variable only occurring to the power of 1, and so on. And then out the front of them, you have a bunch of coefficients, a1, a2, and an. All of these are referred to as coefficients. And then you also have this final one on the far right-hand side. This is referred to as a constant, and it's the only one that doesn't have a variable attached to it. The coefficients are all multiplied to a variable, and the constant has no variable there. So, uh, as an example of a linear equation, I could just imagine something like 3 times the first variable plus 2 times the second variable is equal to 5. Alright, so that's what a linear equation is. It's a relatively simple type of equation. Now, the next question is going to be, what does it mean to have a solution to this equation? Well, a solution is just going to be a bunch of different numbers that I can plug in for the x's, specific values of the x's, and I can plug them into this equation, and I'm going to get, indeed, this value b. So, for example, if I look at the equation that we started with, this, this 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2 is equal to 5, well, I have to think about, is there an x1 value? Can I, can I make it equal to a specific number, a specific number s1? And can I make x2 equal to a specific number, s2, such that the sum of these things are going to be equal to 5? Well, if I glance at it, I can say that if my x1 and my x2, if both of these values are going to be equal to 1, then I get 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 5. Now, this is not the only value that that may work this way. I, I can actually think of a whole bunch of other pairs of x1 and x2, you can try to think of a couple of them, that would add up in this way to be equal to 5. But, but this is one such solution. And indeed, one of the interesting features about linear equations is that there's often going to be more than one. In fact, there might be infinitely many. And so we are going to define the solution set to be all of the different solutions that you can possibly imagine. For instance, uh, I can go by inspection and I, I can note that perhaps if x1 was equal to 0 and x2 was equal to 5 halves, that, that this also works, that that's also a solution. And uh, the problem here is going to be, how are we going to capture all of the solutions? I've got two, I can probably come up with a third and a fourth, but is there some nice way that I can try to write down all of the different solutions? So that's a question we're going to turn to. Now, a system of linear equations just means more than one equation that's linear. Uh, in this case, I have 1, 2, all the way down to m different equations. So here I'm going to have a total of m equations. And they are m equations in a total of n different variables. So if you, if you can imagine, we have n variables down here. 
Now, I've kind of given a little bit of a weird notation. That's the hard part, hardest part of this system of equations. I've given this sort of a11, a12, a2, all goes all the way around like this. And so generically, if I write a and then I put the subscript ij, which might be any set of numbers like one or two, then this is telling me that I am in the ith row. That's what the first component means. This tells me the one here tells me first row, second row, all the way down to nth row. So this is going to be the ith row and the jth column or the jth variable that I'm looking at. So if I look at something like a12, that's this one here, that tells me the first row because of the first component and then the two, which is the second of the two, tells me that I'm with the second variable or I'm in the second column. So this is my kind of like strange notation, but I do this notation just precisely so that I can keep track of everything. So here's a simple example. I could imagine x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 0 and 2x1 is equal to 5. And I'm being a little bit coy in this example. You might not think it looks perfectly right, but I have a hidden 1 that's sticking out in front of the x1. So, so in truth, this is the coefficient a11 equal to x1. And I also have a coefficient of 0 hiding out in front of this x2 over here. So for instance, I could say something like that a12, that's first row, second coefficient. In this scenario, that would just be 3. And I could figure out the other ones as well. So then if I want to consider what is a solution to a system of linear equations, well, it's the same sort of story we had before. It is going to be a list of numbers, an s1 down to an sn. So specific values, I use s for specific, specific values of all of the different x's, so that if I plug them into my equation, every one of these equations is going to be true. And it might be the case that there's all sorts of different possible solutions, as we saw in the previous example. And so I'm going to say the solution set is referring to all possible solutions. Now, one note about these systems of linear equations is that they are thought of as all occurring at the same time. When I'm trying to think about a solution, I'm trying to think about a, a set of numbers, s1 down to sn, that doesn't just satisfy the first one. and doesn't just satisfy the second one. It, it satisfies all of these m different equations all at the same time. I'm sort of concurrently solving all of these different problems. That is what is meant by a system of linear equations. All right, so now let's turn to what is our big goal for this course. If I have a system of linear equations, I want you to tell me what all of its solutions are going to be. And in particular, part of the difficulty might be here on how do we describe it? What happens if there's, say, infinitely many different solutions? That's going to pr prove to be a possibility. So how can we take a particular linear system and figure out what are all of the different solutions and how can we describe them in a nice way? That is going to be the major goal for our course. And as I indicated at the beginning, this seems like a modest goal because this is a relatively restricted question. These are not just systems of any types of equations. They're just only these linear ones, these relatively simple ones. But while we ask a relatively simple question, it turns out that we're going to get very, very, very powerful answers, that we're going to be able to say an enormous amount about linear equations that, in fact, we can't say about nonlinear equations, equations with squares and signs and exponentials and so forth. In fact, it's going to be so successful, our ability to find solutions to systems of linear equations, that in other fields, if we're faced with a nonlinear equation, what will often occur is that we're going to approximate a nonlinear system that we don't understand and we don't know how to deal with, with a linear system that we do understand by the methods of this course and we do know how to deal with, and our approximation, we hope, is going to be good enough.